I see the young girl sit down on the couch as my wife tells her all the requirements of babysitting our baby boy Charles. It still amuses me how she is able to just roll the words off of her tongue. He's a very sound sleeper. No need for a bottle or anything. Okay, is that all you need to tell me? I question my insanity at least 20 times a day. Maybe he is asleep and all of it was all just a dream. My questioning is never strong enough to make me open his door. Mrs. Flanders is the one to care for his needs. She tries to make him help and be a good father to Charles. Numerous fights have broken out between us. You're a terrible father! I'm the best father ever. I take care of him when you are getting drunk. I take care of our child. I'm a better father than yours was. Most of try to fix it and try to get out of the doghouse, but the doghouse is the only place I feel I feel like I'm safe. The only place where I can gather my thoughts and pretend everything's perfect. I close my eyes and remember my wife. She was the most beautiful woman I've ever laid my eyes on. Like a fairy tale. No, that's unrealistic. She was more than that. She made me feel like I was in a movie, but love is not a movie. Love is a hardship, and you never realize until the time comes a hardship is happening to We always wanted to have them, to leave a part of us on earth before we departed. But the things you want most are also the hardest to get. We tried and tried, but it was one disaster after the next. Miscarriage is a word I hope no one has to hear after hearing it so many times as we did. Charles was the smallest flashlight in our pit of darkness. He was our miracle. It was like plain, painting a black canvas with vibrant colors. We could finally see the world as a place that could be changed by someone by someone we together had made. Nothing could make this feeling from us except Charles himself. Three months that boy had made us feel like we could conquer the world, but there was times we felt he was the only thing right we did. None of that mattered after he decided he wasn't meant to change the world. Not only did he not want to see it, if he could, he also tore our canvas. The canvas that changed our life completely had been ripped to shreds as we fell back into the pit, no light, just darkness. The spectacular woman that made my life feel like a movie soon, soon turned into a woman I didn't know. It was like a drive-by had occurred in her life and there was nothing left to do but just accept the fate that she had chosen. <laughs> Darling, you've come out, and so I'll leave. Honey, be quiet. Charles is sleeping. What? She firmly grabbed my hand and brought me to this to his room. I feel my eyes burn due to the tears starting again. She pats my hand as a way to comfort me. We reach his crib that was in the corner with white shearing hanging over it. As she pulls back it, I break down and scream. The small fragile body was wrapped in a blanket. The aroma was a terrible stench that you can only describe as a smell of rotting flesh. His eyes were shut and I stood over the crib. I could see how... He had been wasting away. He's a sound sleeper. Yeah. Do I take a break? No. Well, you could pause for like five seconds. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Because these are just clips. Because, like, this will be happening. Because, like, this will be happening. Because, like, this will be happening. Chirp! Chirp!